Rules are meant to be broken. That could easily be the golden rule for any lake commando. If you spend too much time worrying about where the fish are supposed to be, you'll likely never find where they actually are. Easy to say, much harder to do. Do Steve Benaz and Ryan Chuckle have what it takes? We'll find out right now on Lake Commandos. I love fishing new water. The challenge is always the same. Find fish, trigger strikes. Ooh, that's a big fish. But what I really love is beating the other guy. I got a fish. This is Lake Commando. Lake Commandos is powered by Nissan Titan. The calendar is one of the first tools a good Lake Commando uses when considering any unknown body of water, and it's normally one of the most reliable. Seasonal movement and patterns are usually predictable and apply to all fish species. But Mother Nature is anything but predictable, and the best commandos know that even if the calendar says the fish should be in one place, it's never a sure thing. Today, Steve Finaz and Ryan Chuckle are on a late spring, early summer multi-species bass mission that just might prove this year's calendar wrong. Yeah, the, the, this spring has been weird. I think everything's a little bit behind, a couple weeks probably behind. Yeah. So this time of year, I would expect to find them out a little bit deeper, but given the fact that this seems to be a shallower lake to begin with, yeah. and given the, the recent spring, we may find them shallow. So our challenge is right now is if, if they're, if they're post-spawn fish, then they're not gonna chase. If they're pre-spawn fish, yeah, they may be active, but if they're on bed still, we're not gonna be able to get them to chase anything. The battlefield today is large at over 3,500 acres, but it's shallow with lots of offshore structure, but not a lot of weed growth. An interesting combination for a mission to locate and catch both smallmouth and largemouth bass. I'm gonna be fishing a brand new bait for Berkeley. It's called a spy bait. This is the Spy 70. It comes in two different models. It comes in the slow sink, and the fast sink, you'll notice that the bait has propellers on both ends. I couldn't think of a better crawfish imitator that we can use in a variety of ways than a tube. A tube is kind of an old standby. To me, it's a bait you can use all year long in a variety of situations. I'm throwing it on a Revo STX spinning reel in a size 30. Superb drag system, super smooth reel, fun to fish. I really enjoy this reel. In terms of uh, reel, I've got the Revo MGX in a size 30. Again, I like that little bit larger reel for casting distance with that tube and getting it out there. This is the Abu Garcia Villain. It's a seven foot medium action with a faster tip. It's a nice light rod, but good butt section to get the hooks in there. I'm rigging this on a Abu Garcia Veracity seven foot medium heavy action rod. Uh, great for casting distance. Great strength. Uh, if we have to muscle some big fish out, uh, out from under a pier, it's gonna get the job done. In terms of line, I've got eight pound Fireline Ultra 8. Uh, a superb line for casting long distances, but I'm not tying directly to the bait. What I'm doing is I'm fishing fluorocarbon as a leader. I've got six feet of Berkeley 100% fluoro in 10 pound test. I like the little bit heavier line when you got big bass. For line, I've got the Berkeley X5. I've got that in eight pound test. And I'm gambling a little bit, but um, I really trust Berkeley Trilene 100% fluorocarbon. I put an eight pound test, which could get a little bit tricky if we get into some reeds or we get into piers, but I'm gonna start with that because I think even though this water's a little stained with the water clarity, the lighter line may get me just a couple more bites. Hey, I've had Ryan on a couple times on Lake Commandos. This guy really knows how to fish. Our, our score is actually one to one, so we've gotta break this rubber match, but What's key, I think, is his expertise is going to help us break this down, but my goal today is to catch one more bass than him. There's nothing more fun to me than breaking down a brand new body of water, and this is brand new to us. I've driven by this a million times. I've never fished it. I've wanted to. Boy, what a bug hatch, huh? Unreal. Man. That shoreline here is just coated with them, and I look right here, there's like a layer on the water. Yeah, the lake is covered. Hey, 
As guests, you get a choice. You want to go first or you want to go second? Well, if I get a choice, I don't think that's much of a choice. I'll go first. <laughs> All right, both's yours, dude. Tubes, we'll start with tubes. Let's tube it. You know, this lake is tough to break down. Not only does it have 13 miles of shoreline, it's got probably 13 miles of reefs out there. So really what we're trying to do right now is cover water and, and fish fast. Fish, got him. After starting the search in shallow water, the guys quickly realized the bug hatch had the bite shut down. So they made a move to a rocky point with deep water access close by. The Garmin side view found the rocks easily and the smallmouth were there. Like your tooth pattern, baby. Nice. <laughs> oh, look at the side of that fish. That's a thick fish. Yes. Look at that. Beauty. Look at that power tube. <laughs> Did that one in there or what? Eat it. Look at that. Nice. Man, he's just thick. That's yeah. a beautiful fish. You don't expect to see fish like that in these in the lakes. That looks like a great lakes model. This lake clearly has good forage in here. This, look at how well fed. This, these fish are so thick in through the middle. This is probably only about 17 and a half inches long, but uh, I mean, that's a hefty, hefty fish and a good start for the morning. I like your tube pattern, man. A fast start for Panaz and the power tube, but is it a sign of things to come? Fish. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Yamaha, reliability starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Plano and the new Plano Edge series, protect your passion. Fish Monkey, performance fishing gloves. ARE, outfit for life. Hodgman, gear with grit. And by Berkeley Trilene, anglers trust Berkeley Trilene. This segment of Lake Commandos is brought to you by Fish Monkey, performance fishing gloves. A late spring multi-species bass commando battle between Steve Panaz and Ryan Chuckle is just getting rolling and Panaz is off to a fast start. But Ryan Chuckle is no amateur when it comes to catching bass. He's a veteran fishing industry marketing and PR specialist and is also an avid bass tournament angler, which means he spends a lot of days on the water chasing both smallmouth and largemouth bass. There's nobody that I enjoy spending time with and breaking down a lake more than Steve. And this format forces you to do it, but it's great to have somebody that you can compete with, but share things along the way and make observations and learn from them and so it's it's always fun and uh, today was no exception but one of the things i've been doing is this is a floating mouse tail a little trout bait and uh what i'll do is i'll take this and i'll actually cut the head right off and then i'm rigging this as a little tail on the back end so i get some chartreuse coming off the tube and it just sits there like this you get the tentacles out of there. So you can see with this hook, it's the right length for this tube. And I've got plenty of hook gap to hold these fish. And that little chartreuse tail, you got a fish? I actually just popped it off a rock, just like I was describing earlier. Kind of got hung up on that shallow rock up in there. You need a net? And just kind of popped it up. Ah, I don't know yet. Ooh, nice fish. Wow, there's a stud. <laughs> Great nice fish, one. dude. Yeah. That's four plus. It's getting there, huh? Yeah, nice fish. Ate the tube. Eat it good. Hooked you know what's impressing me well. on these fish in these lake is just how thick. They're just broad. Yeah. yeah. This, now, I mean, this looks pre spawn to me. Yeah, I agree. But the tails are clean and everything. The tails are clean, but yeah, I'd say that's a pre spawn fish. You know, I always wonder when I, you're fishing down this, what is different about that rock that makes those fish be there? Or, is, or are they just roaming and we just came across them? You know, that's kind of the mystery of these, those, you know, those kind of wolf packs of smallmouth that you were talking about is, seems like sometimes you can pinpoint why they're there. Yeah. But a lot of times it's just, it's just you, you fish along and find them and take advantage of them, but you don't really ever uncover why they're in that particular spot. How big a fish? Two and a half or maybe. Nice fish, dude. Oh, yeah. Nice. 
or maybe not, but it's keeper-ish. That was a good example of, you know, needing to think about fishing these things a little bit different because I think that tube was kind of swimming when he ate it. You know, and swimming tubes is something that works pretty good in a lot of these clear lakes. If you want to know what they're eating, look at that, this just came right out. This is what he just ate right before that. Pretty close, a little bit of orange on it. Ryan Chuckles' Berkeley Power Tube program is doing a nice job of matching the natural forage and turning scattered fish into biters. And after two hours, this commando battle is tight. Thank you. You know what this is, Ryan? A four. That's a tiebreaker. Up by one, up by one. Now it's time to make the switch to Steve's presentation and find out if the new Berkeley spy bait can spy out any fish. Fish, got him. Ooh, nice one too. Ooh, yeah. Spy bait, baby. This segment of Lake Commandos is brought to you by Camp 365, the cabin that goes everywhere. The Lake Commanders are locked in a multi-species bass battle on an early summer day that, due to unusually cold weather, to the fish is more like early spring. This year, weather's been challenging across the country, especially in the upper Midwest with lots of rain, lots of fronts and things, and we're dealing with it right now. These fish are so far behind, uh, it, it, it's hard to really describe where they should be. Uh, I, I always thought uh, we'd be in post-spawn. I, I thought we'd have water temps in the, in the low 70s, high 60s like that, and no, it's been in the low to mid 60s, and these fish, some of them are still on beds, and it's almost July. Ryan Chuckles' Berkeley Power Tube pattern produced a number of quality fish and a small lead for Steve Finance. But now the guys will make the switch to Steve's Berkeley Spy Bait. You know, a lot of anglers have never heard of a spy bait. It's got two props on both sides. It's designed to sink, but you cast it out and, and just basically uh, on a steady retrieve, the, the blades turn real nice. It's a, it's a finesse presentation. What I like to do is get on top of fish and just let it fall down and and uh, I, I've never used one this early in the year but it's really a, a dynamite bait especially when you're fishing a little bit deeper water fish got him oh nice one too oh yeah spy bait baby he hit on the fall Ryan did it really yeah he ate it too look at that nice Ooh, yeah that's a stud that's man. a stud nice one Look at this, this is called a spy bait. And it's a new technique really for catching smallmouth where you cast out and these little propellers ride through the surface and you let it go and it, and it falls with a wobble. Obviously drives these big smallmouth crazy. Look at the size of that beast. To me a spy bait has just got enough. You can cover water, but it's, you know, it's not a super aggressive bait. I just feel like a fish that, even a, a, a negative post-spawn fish, it's just an easy enough meal that they're gonna eat it. Hey, the search today is actually really tough. These fish are in post-spawn or, or, or spawning, and they're not moving. They're feeding probably down, not up. And the signs that bass are feeding on the bottom are obvious. So despite the incredible action of the spy bait and the fact that it caught the attention of a beautiful bonus pike, it's not the right pattern for bass on this day. So with only a few hours left in this commando battle, the guys will switch back to the Berkeley power tubes. Nobody likes repair bills. That's why Yamaha offers Yamaha owners the opportunity to buy extended service contracts. YES or Yamaha Extended Service offers Yamaha outboard owners several benefits. One, YES covers 100% of the cost of parts and labor for covered mechanical breakdowns. And covered repairs can be performed at any authorized Yamaha dealer across the U.S. Your Yamaha outboard is covered no matter how many hours you put on it during the coverage period and plans are transferable should you trade or sell your Yamaha outboard. Yamaha offers a variety of service plans and there are restrictions. To learn more, visit YamahaOutboards.com 
and click on the maintenance tab for more information on the YES program. When it comes to achieving peak performance, maintenance matters. Lake Commandos is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Abu Garcia for life. Berkeley Power Bait. Fish bite and won't let go. Garmin, join the club. Fraybill's Magnum Bait Station, trusted gear since 1938. TH Marine, hundreds of brands you know and trust. Swagger Tackle, premium tungsten sinkers. And by Camp 365, the cabin that goes everywhere. This segment of Lake Commandos is brought to you by TH Marine. Find thousands of products and brands you know and trust at thmarinesupplies.com. Lake Commandos Steve Panaz and Ryan Chuckle are sorting out the problem of an unusually late spring that has traditional fish patterns way behind schedule. After using a Berkeley power tube to establish a solid early day pattern, the guy switched to the Berkeley spy bait. But despite a couple of big bites, the spy bait simply didn't attract the numbers. So the commandos have switched back to the tubes and moved shallow to explore some shoreline vegetation. I'm just rigging up a Texas rig tube, pegging the weight so that it stays all in one package. A lot of times I'll take a little piece of a general and jam it up in the head of this to give it a little extra weight, but also just to get something to grab the hook into. But that's usually better if you're flipping kind of heavier weeds. This is, looks pretty sparse, so I think I should be fine just rigging it Texas style, but this extra wide gap offset hook is hopefully gonna help with uh, sealing the deal on some fish. It's a large eat. Ooh, that's a good one. Look at this one, right? Uh, nice. I'll take that. Not a three, but close. That's a nice one. Yeah. Up shallow. Was it way up in there? Power tube. Texas rig. Yeah, he was up. He was up shallow. Nice. Man, these fish are all over the place. It's it, 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 it's kind of making me crazy to think of catching this largemouth in shallow water and we're catching smallmouth out on rock. It kind of makes a guy wonder where to turn. You got him? Yeah, you got him. <laughs> <laughs> I dragged that enough? <laughs> yeah, but I'm just not used to, I'm just, I always use braid and I'm just like the hook set. <laughs> well, this thing is like, it take, you gotta like set the hook by about 25 feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, Largy. <laughs> that, was, got him, huh? that was the world's ugliest hook set, guaranteed. <laughs> uh. Oh, that's funny. Whenever a commando sets out for the unknown, the calendar is always the first clue to fish location and activity. But the best commandos know it's not always gospel. Today, Steve and Ryan had to set aside what the calendar told them and rely on recent weather patterns to turn back the clock and target locations and concentrate on presentations that normally would have been the right choice more than two weeks earlier in the year. That ability to gauge what the situation actually is rather than what it should be led to another successful Lake Commando mission. Hey dude, it was a, actually it was a pretty good day and, yes. and it was a tough conditions. I, you know, I'm proud we got on a big body water and we figured it out. Yeah, 3,500 acres, that's no joke. And when you start trying to dissect this lake in particular, it's kind of a goofy one. It's just not your typical lake. And you know, so we, we picked two good baits, we really, did. when you think about it. A two, very versatile, we fish it in a bunch of ways. And the spy bait to me was cool just because it, it, it's not something I, I'm guessing a lot of people fish on this lake, and we caught some good ones on I've it. I've never fished it this early before, and it yeah. was fun for me to, to catch that big fish on it yeah. and then had that pike, but it's one of those baits, I think, if uh, it, it could be almost a replacement sometimes to a jerk bait, yeah. uh, especially if they're going on minnows. But these fish, they seem to be looking down. Everyone we caught seemed to be spitting up uh, crawfish, and yep. that power tube does it. Yeah, the tube, man, it's just a time-tested lure, but what's fun is we caught him on a uh, in a bunch of different ways on the tube today. Absolutely, so. shallow deep. Yep. All right, Dude, man. It was good, good stuff. We're going to do it again. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you.